You're listening to the British Baseball Podcast. Hello, baseball family. Matthew here with episode 100. Uh, can't believe it's come around this quick, but it's here. And this really is from the car to the spare room. 100 episodes over two years has absolutely flown. I can't believe it's gone this quick. And this is like a tribute show or one of those clip shows of all the best bits that you see in, in a lot of sitcoms. Um, I messaged as many people as possible to see if they'd like to contribute. Some people weren't comfortable in doing that, and that's fine. Uh, we've had people that have read some stuff um, out and, and had pictures put of it, and other people submit things to be to be read out. So this is um, this is my love letter to to you, the British baseball public. Uh, thank you for everything, and let's get into it. Grateful to the game. The man who started it all, Drew Spencer. Hey, guys. First of all, I just really want to thank Matt for uh, bringing back the uh, Baseball Memories series. Um, if you remember last summer, we started this off in the pandemic, just thinking about, you know, if you never got to play another baseball game again, what would be the memories that you have that make you grateful to the game? Um, so here's one for me. Uh, summer of 1994, uh, I was playing for the Orleans Cardinals in the Cape Cod League. They're now called the Redbirds, but in 94, they were still called the Cardinals, and I had the great fortune of being able to play for them that summer. And uh, a lot of fun things happened on the field, but one of my favorite memories um, that I'll take with me forever from this game is that our second baseman on that team is a guy from the University of Florida named Trip McKay, who transferred to Oklahoma State uh, that summer. Um, but we became good friends. He was a great second baseman, speedy guy, switch hitter. Um, and uh, Trip McKay and I decided to learn to throw with other hands. So about midway through the summer, we exchanged gloves every day and we'd play catch. I'd throw right-handed, he'd throw left-handed, and uh, we practiced it every single day um, until we got to the end of the summer, and Trip and I could get out to about 100, 120 feet and throw the ball uh, with our opposite hand. So much so that uh, sometimes some of the fans, when they saw us change gloves back, uh, or had their minds blown because they actually thought watching me throw by the end of the summer, I was a natural righty and that trip was a natural lefty. Um, so it was a really great time. It was great teaching ourselves something new in the game of baseball at that point. And it's a memory I'll take with me forever. Travis Harfield. What baseball means to me. Hi, my name is Travis Harfield and I am currently playing with the Lancashire Legends. This is the ninth or 10th team that I have played with. Baseball was the first sport I ever played, and I believe it gave me my identity as an athlete and the feeling of, yes, this is something I can do, something where I belong. I did not know I was good at sports, and with moving quite a bit, constants have been my mom and baseball, which has given me a place to belong. I came to baseball quite late compared to many children, probably because this was God's plan. One step at a time, and there was a bunch of steps that needed to happen before I was ready for baseball. I believe baseball was meant to be my learning ground because it has provided me with an entire 360 degree experience of what life can bring you and how you can grow from the experiences. This does not always mean trophies and medals and to be honest most of my trophies are in a drawer because it's the memory of the game or the moment that is special. I do think that the best learning can be from the losses or the mistakes that you make Baseball can make you more resilient if you respond with your best self. No one is perfect, but striving for that and coming back to play after losses or personal challenges makes you stronger mentally. (laughs) Baseball develops you. Baseball has given me some really awesome experiences from my very first travel tournament as an eager eight-year-old, which sounds glamorous, but we drove up from Vancouver Island to Nanaimo and camped out in Bear Woods with the other families. It was as much fun camping, swimming in the lake, and sharing barbecue as it is was on the field. The thing I have found about baseball is that there are many good, friendly families, and only the occasional ones who are not so great. So I would say one of the best things are the families that you meet. I have had some astounding coaches who have 
not just been there to help me train and be a better player for the team, but also help me access equipment I needed. And in the case of LYBL, help me to get to Poland for the Little League qualifiers and put my name forward for a youth grant. The fact that the coaches I have met at um, all levels have been fantastic. Positive individuals who volunteer their experiences to help youth means a lot to me. I would not be playing baseball if it was not for them. To name a few, Paul Legras, John Eaton, Scott Bourgeois, Lee Manning, Jonathan Rodriguez, and of course the Team GB coaches during my two U12 tournaments and present GB coaches. I have been playing baseball in one way or another for seven years now. I believe I will play it for life. Baseball is the kind of life that I want. The opportunity to grow and succeed, to have fun, to deal with the to deal with both the wins and losses, and to be grateful for all that it brings. No matter where I play baseball, it feels like I am home. Hi, it's, it's Sal and Dean from GB Baseball and Smarter Performance Limited. Um, Matt, congratulations on your 100th episode British Baseball Podcast. It's been awesome to, to hear so many different people involved in the British community. Um, and you do an awesome job bringing it all together and, and, and making the, the podcast so much fun. Um, you've asked a question about what does British baseball mean to me. Um, the, the, the biggest thing that I've had from being involved in GB baseball and British baseball community since around 2004 is the friendships and the, the, the people that I've met. I've been so fortunate to be in a situation where I've been able to go away with tournaments both in, in the UK and abroad and to meet the, the masses of people who, and many of them have become friends and many of them become my best friends. You know, and for me, that's the most important thing, that the people that I've got to meet, the, the friendships and experiences that we've had together and the fun times and sometimes not so fun times when tournaments don't go quite the way you hope them to. But yeah, I'm, I'm just ever so grateful to be part of this community. And yeah, you know, I've, I've just been in a place where, you know, sometimes like the pandemic just emphasizes the things that you miss. And there's some people I've not seen for a couple of years because of all of that's been going on. And I really look forward to, to meeting some of them. And hopefully at the Euros coming up in Italy next month, I'll get to meet one or two friends I haven't seen for an extremely long time. And British baseball means absolute world to me. Um, so congratulations. Look forward to hearing what other people's experiences are. So thank you again, Matt. Cheers. Hi, my name is Laura Hirai. I am a student at Swarthmore College in the US, uh, where I'm also a student athlete playing softball. I'm really grateful for British baseball and the game in general because it's brought me to the US and it was my dream to play at a college level and also have high academics and here I am today. And also I'm also grateful for British baseball, for the community and for always supporting me and for always having my back and it has really shaped who I am today. I feel a lot more compassion, I feel more determined to achieve things that I never thought I could and that is all thanks to British baseball and the game, so thank you. Hey, Gavin Marshall, um, Great Britain Hall of Famer from the class of 2010. Just doing a short video for Matt Mutton and uh, the milestone that his show has now met, um, 100 episodes. So congratulations, Matt. Keep up the great work. It's great that people are, are, are talking baseball. And I love listening in and um, listening to some of my old teammates um, and friends of the game uh, and listening to their journey. And, and I think that's the question that Matt was asking is, what does baseball mean to you? And, and, and it means a lot to me. It means so much to me. And it is about that journey, and it's about the journey that you know. Sometimes you don't even realise that you, you have with with people out there, um, just by taking the feel of them. But baseball uh, um, has allowed me to travel the world. It's allowed me to be paid to play for for you know the great game, um, you know, which was a massive achievement, just as well as game, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. But what baseball um, does do is it challenges you. Um, and, and there's nowhere to hide on a baseball field and, and that's what I love about it because um, it gets you ready for life and you know everything I've experienced on a baseball field um, I've also experienced it off the field um, in personal life and, and I feel more prepared um, for those, um, those kind of um, situations that arise off the field and, and in, in like you say pressure situations 
So yeah, baseball um, is a great sport. Um, it certainly recognizes hard work um, and you do get rewarded for that hard work and effort you put in. But I would just like to say that baseball has, has introduced me to so many great people. And when I say people, I don't necessarily mean teammates and coaches. I mean the backroom staff as well. And, and not forgetting the support mechanisms um, that's, that's around the athlete and themselves. So, you know, your family, your loved ones, um, your partners. So what I would say is that um, thanks to baseball, I have some long life skills and values that have been installed in me from so many great people um, across the whole world um, that basically um, have promoted me um, to be a success, not just on the field, but off the field. My name is Saeed Bayan, and I'm a rookie currently playing for the Birmingham Metalheads Baseball Club. I'm usually found lingering around centre field, but also enjoy playing third baseman and more recently pitcher. Baseball means a lot to me for many reasons. Competitive sport has always been a huge part of my life, be that rugby, basketball or athletics in previous years, so it's been an exciting time starting a new sport this past year. I love the fact that a baseball team is one huge machine comprised of nine moving parts that have to work together to achieve the results that they want. I'm extremely grateful to the game of baseball for welcoming a rookie that understood none of the rules with open arms, and I am proud to be a part of the ever-growing British baseball community. To see my progress over the past year as a player has been extremely gratifying, and I'm grateful for my supportive coaches and teammates that continue to push me forwards, and I can confidently say that the sport has filled a huge void in my life that my few years of absence from competitive sports had created. The lessons I've learned from the game of baseball have positively impacted me both inside and outside the field, and I look forward to continuing my journey in this amazing sport. Hi, I'm Mike Harold, and I want to congratulate Matt on the 100th edition of the Baseball Podcast. Um, I love listening to the podcast. I like to listen to players that I've known talk about their careers and, um, and their experiences. I was introduced to baseball in August 1966 by a chap called Alec Williams when he asked me down to attend a practice session of the Nottingham Athletics. I was hooked from that first session and I've loved the game ever since. I signed for the Athletics in August 1967 and I've been involved in the game as a player, as an administrator and as a coach ever since. I can't answer the question what baseball means to me because it literally means everything to me. Um, baseball has taught me about life, about being a man, about how to win, how to lose. And I've met so many great people and made many, many friends. I'm grateful that baseball's been in my life. Hey, this is Ash. I'm Norwich Senior Warriors here from Essex Redbacks game on Sunday. Just a thing for Matt and his podcast episode um, for his 100th. Well done for getting that far, mate. Good work. Um, what British baseball means to me, oh, it's just basically it's helped me so much. As you all know, who listened to my podcast in the past, mental health is a big part of my life and supporting that type of thing and it's really kind of helped me you know balance that and, and really get something to focus on um, the, the group of people that i'm surrounded with are just incredible and really couldn't ask for, for a nicer bunch at norwich Iceni and the teams we face in the eebl the east of england baseball league um, so yeah so i just want to say you know baseball is love it and for anyone listening who wants to get into, into baseball i could not recommend it enough um been about two years now and never once looked back never once thought ah, this game was up to me as soon as i started it was it was the one so yeah anyway warriors on three hi everyone it's john here from backflips and nerds matt congratulations 100 episodes the big one in the can well done mate so matt's asked me to explain a little bit about why I love baseball and how I got into the game as part of his 100th episode celebration. Now, I've told this story before, um, so for those of you who've seen me writing about it or talking about it on Backflips and Nerds, I'm sorry I'm going to bore you to death. Um, but the reason I love baseball or how I got into baseball was when I was at uni, I started watching it uh, at night. I was one of those night night owls who just who got into it through Channel 5 Baseball. So huge thanks to Johnny Gould and Josh Cherwin for that. 
for me, it was at a time when I was not doing so well personally, and it was a way of helping me escape. I got into it initially just because I loved sport, but then it became a sort of a meditation for me, uh, the sort of the calmness, the stillness, the predictability combined with unpredictability. I just really got with the pace and speed of the game and its contemplative nature and how things could always change and ebb and flow at a sort of laconic pace i absolutely loved that about the game and i still do uh, as i got into it there are things i love more i love i love analyzing pitching i love watching pitching but for me it's still that it's the same thing as test cricket it's that pace it's the fact that you can settle in you can keep half an eye on it and be doing something else it's kind of meditative so that for me is why i love baseball it's contemplative and it's meditative hello everyone my name's john carter and i've been fortunate enough to be involved in baseball in the uk Ireland, Europe and the US for 31 years and that's all thanks to my two brothers Nick and Ben Carter along with Margaret Borley MBE. In that time I've been fortunate enough to play on 13 different teams and I've met some amazing people, players and coaches along the way. For me baseball is such a great game as on any given day you get the chance to do something amazing and that's whether hustle out a single, uh, strike somebody out, uh, field a ground ball and throw somebody out. It, it just doesn't really matter what it is. Um, it's something positive you're doing for yourself whilst being part of a team. And for me, you just can't beat that. What's up, guys? My name is Mitchell and uh, I played for the London Mets in the NBL. And I also played at a Division Three school in Tennessee called Sewanee. Uh, baseball means more to me than I can explain. Uh, I started playing this game when I was 13 and I've been obsessed with it every day since. It's something which has helped shape me into the individual and man that I am today. And it continues to teach me things about myself every time I step onto the field. I've had the privilege to play baseball in 10 to 15 different countries around the world and also represent my country in Team GB, which has led me to some amazing and incredible places, which I never thought I'd go to. But beyond that, what makes baseball special to me is incredible people which you meet along the way. Each team and organization has a sense of family um, and you know that you can go out there and depend on the guys that you're playing with. Every time I, I run out on the field, I know that the eight guys behind me are there for me and are my brothers and are willing to go to war with me. The London Mets really embraces that fact, I think, and that's what makes British baseball special. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. Thanks for listening. My name is Josh Chetwind, and I played for the Great Britain national team for a decade. Played Division One college baseball, and then uh, talked about baseball in Great Britain for many years on Channel 5, BBC Radio, and most recently on the Johnny and Josh podcast. I'm here to answer the question, what does baseball mean to me? And the answer to that depends on what time of my life we're talking about. So when I was a kid, it meant that I had an identity. Uh, I was shy, I didn't have a lot of friends, and I picked up baseball and it gave me an opportunity to connect with people uh, with the sport. When I was a teenager in high school, uh, it taught me how to work hard. Baseball is a sport that absolutely 100% rewards hard work. And I learned that through baseball, if you work hard, good things happen. And then in college and in my brief pro career, Baseball uh, taught me that sometimes you can do things that you even don't think you can do. I didn't think I was a Division One college player. I didn't think I was a professional player. And I had the opportunity to do both because of the sport, which uh, meant the world to me. And then probably more than anything, playing for Great Britain, the opportunity to represent a country in international play was such an incredible honor. And it meant the world to me to be able to do that. Overall, baseball has allowed me to travel, it's allowed me to meet people. It's allowed me to make friends. And it's just been such a special experience. So what does baseball mean to me? It means a lot. And I'm so grateful for it. My name is Jack Ford Lane. I am the manager of the Bracknell Inferno Baseball Club. Um, and I've played for the Essex Archers and um, now the manager of Bracknell Inferno. I think it's <sighs> a very difficult question. I think the main reason why I love baseball is sort of twofold. One is for me when i first got into it it was something away from everything else i was doing um I, it was what i needed 
in terms of an escape from work or studying or trying to find work um, in the career that I'm in, it, you know, it's very all encompassing. And I just had baseball there where I, I had all this energy going through my body and I could just focus it into baseball. Um, and the hours that you spend together as a team just bring you together um, as, as one unit. And when, when that's going on, it's when it's at its absolute best. It's why I just really spend my time trying to find ways where I can improve myself in every single way so that I can use it to help other people and bring as many people as humanly possible into the game um, and see if I can get them playing. Um, and I, I just think the community as well, for the most part, is, is just full of people who are just excited to see and hear about and support everyone else. I've played games where the other team supported me, especially when starting off just as much as my own team have supported me and encouraged me. And it's those moments where it's fascinating and amazing um, and just different to every other sport that I've personally played. You know, and I've played almost every sport humanly possible. Um, and I feel like finally I found my sport, if that makes sense. Not that I don't love other sports, you know, I'm addicted to football especially but this one's for me that's why i love it hello i'm charlie brown the voice behind a little podcast called baseball bite and i'm very honored in spite of my relatively minor league presence in the baseball community to be asked to speak briefly as to what baseball means to me um there's a little bit of background you know i first discovered as it were baseball when i lived in japan many years ago but it's really the london series that uh, rekindled and and reminded me of how deeply rewarding this game is you know i always describe my love of baseball as being a bit like inheriting a beautiful house and you walk into it and then you discover that it's more than a house that beyond it there's this vast land that is populated by um, endless avenues nooks and communities to explore and baseball is this this vast expanse that is not just the current game but that sweeping landscape of culture and history and tradition you can spend the rest of your life exploring and, you know, and, it, and it's tied up primarily in the story of America, but then, of course, it's enriched even further by this international uh, dimension, which we're all part of, which I very, feel very lucky to be part of. And I guess that my podcast, I always think of it as my own little regular little love letter to baseball, in which, you know, I love to celebrate the, just the names and the sounds and the images and the places, which are, it's all wrapped up in the magic for me. You know, and it's it's fitting, I think, that we're celebrating the 100th episode, but also this week, the 100th anniversary of the first ever baseball broadcast. I mean, I love the medium of baseball radio. And one of my heroes, Commissioner Giamatti, talked about the, the green fields of the mine. And especially for us, you know, we transported thousands of miles to the, to the sunshine and the peanuts and the beer and the manic organists. But it's funny, you know, because I, you know, I was never really a sporty kid and, a kid, and I always found it quite difficult to connect to that side of things. But if I could go back in time... You know, I'd tell that lad, I'd say, you know, check out baseball, you know, discover this game in which it, it, it's uh, for every, any type, you know, it's not just one particular type of athleticism or body and so on. As I always say, you know, for every Jose Altuve, there's an Aaron Judge and for every Noah Syndergaard, there's a Bartolo Colon. Uh, you know, in that sense, it's a house in which uh, uh, everyone has a place and it's one in which I'm very happy to have uh, found a home. Anyway, thank you for listening and thank you, baseball. My name is Andrew Taylor and I write about British baseball history on the Folks of Baseball Chronicle. For me, baseball means family and community. I first fell in love with the game age nine when my sister came back from the States with amazing presents and stories from the Bronx. I was lucky to go to a secondary school that played baseball and softball on a purpose-built diamond and to play on its first ever team. Writing about baseball has opened so many doors for me and I've made many friends around the world. I've even been made an honorary member of the Canadian Armed Forces in the UK's baseball team. The sense of community and family is especially present in British baseball and in writing about its history it's amazing to be able to narrate the lineage from today's baseball community all the way back to the pioneering teams from the 1890s like Derby County and the London Thespians. It's almost like a family tree. So congratulations to the British Baseball Podcast on your 100th episode, and thank you for helping to share the stories of British baseball. Artist Andy Brown. Here's a short video about what British baseball means to me. Um, and what it means is this. In front of me, it's my work, it's my life, it's what I do. 
and it's meant that for well a few years now um but it's only been this year and and just the end of last year with the covid pandemic that i've actually been in the country and able to paint british baseball um something that i never really knew existed thanks to the british baseball podcast bat flips and nerds and podcasts like that ball cups and bagpipes my knowledge is much better now and i've been out painting the different teams in the different places so we've got marsden green there home with the birmingham metalheads we've got the worcester sorcerers merlin field here we've got farnham park the battle of britain back in may time um we've got scottish baseball over here we've got the aberdeen oilers uh, george w chalmers field and tom waddell memorial stadium in Tayport in fife and I guess it, 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 it's hard to say what it means to me, but it's all contained in the pictures. It's all it's all these people on the sidelines who cut turn out in the mist and the rain. This was the 4th of July, a very, very misty day where the, the clouds were coming over, covering up the whole field, relenting again. Um, and the game kind of the players disappearing in and out of the field. It's the, it's the cricket strip in the back there and the boundary for the cricket field that goes just close to second base. Um, it's the thistle at the front of the Scottish baseball in that one. Um, here again with Tom Waddell Memorial Stadium, same thing. We've got castles, churches in the background there. We've got the estuary, the Tay River. Um, but to me, British baseball is all in these paintings. It's the football posts, it's the planes coming into land, it's the players, it's the weather. It's, um... It's all there. It's also these people here, these little Polaroids that I've been taking as I've been travelling around. Jason West of the Tayport Breakers. Um, Stephen Evans of the Aberdeen Oilers. Two American gentlemen who have come over to the UK and started baseball teams in Scotland. A place which I don't think many people would expect to find baseball. And it's that spirit, it's that passion, it's that drive to play the game which has been created by all the people that I've met in these paintings, um, which keeps it going and, and keeps the keeps it growing. So well done to everyone there, and um, I can't wait to go and see more in this beautiful place, beautiful country. So thanks for watching. That's what British baseball means to me. Liverpool Trojans in Bleas. Hey Matt. So here we are, you're 100 episodes in. Um, who'd have thought that was going to happen when you started out all that time ago? I remember I was on one of your one of your first five or six shows I think I was on. Uh, we stumbled our way through the interview. Um, you told me when we were off air about the first one you'd done where you'd uh, recorded the interview with, uh, I think it was Joelle, uh, in your car at lunchtime and you were editing it in, in, on your phone. And uh, here we are now, 100 episodes later. So congratulations, well done to you. You set us a challenge uh, this week. You asked us to get in touch with you and to tell you uh, in video form exactly what it is that British baseball means to us. And to some people, maybe that's a, a short answer. Um, but for me, I'm not the kind of person who's often struggling for words, but it means so much to me. I have to give it some proper consideration um, and try and put down in the right words exactly what it is that British baseball is, has, has given to me and what it means to me um, uh, in my time. So I guess for me it's been it's been a constant presence in my life uh, since I was 14 years old. It's been an anchor point, it's been a distraction when, it, when, uh, when I've needed it. Uh, it's been an outlet for, uh, for the stresses that life throws at you. Um, it's been a reset button. It's been it's been a passport to travel in in more recent years. Um, I've made more friends than I could have ever hoped for. Um, I got this really uh, kind of dysfunctional extended family now. You know, I've got the guys of the Trojans. They're my brothers, uh, and then there's all the all the cousins and uncles and aunts uh, from around the game as well. Um, I got people I look up to. Um, people that I, that I learn from um, but for the purposes of, of, of this list I'm going to single out uh, a, a few people um, who I think you know, are worthy of a mention seeing as I've got the platform today so 
Um, Rob Alger is the first name I'll mention. He taught me so much about about belief, uh, about um, about how hard work and about um, never accepting that you're beaten in, in any situation. Uh, he was the head coach for the Trojans when we enjoyed our most successful stint um, and the most successful part of my, my playing career. Also part of that team was Martin Godsall. Uh, what more can be said about that guy? Uh, he played at an incredible level until he was 50 years old. Uh, he decided to step away from the game now. Um, he's toying with a comeback here and there, but not pitching anything uh, anything like as much as he used to, but what a guy he is. Um, I need to mention uh, J-Rod, uh, Liam Carroll and, and Drew Spencer. In, in 2020, I was asked to get involved with the with the GB under 18s program and it's been it's really opened my eyes to a whole layer of baseball that that I didn't know existed you know uh, I've had plenty of success over my career playing with the Trojans um, but the introductions that that you know that I've got to guys like you know I, I've known Will for a long time I suppose but but getting to work with him a bit closer Will Linton uh, PK Cam Mini uh, John Crammon uh, you know, I'm sure there are other people I'm missing out there, but these are people who just are so knowledgeable about the game, uh, and they and they love sharing it. And the other thing about it is they're the most humble bunch of people. None of them think that they've got all the answers. They're all willing to learn. They all, they all want to listen to different points of view, and they accept that. Uh, and they accept that there's no there's no right and wrong answer. There's different opinions, and it's been a, a great uh, journey to be to be a part of. Uh, two people who probably never hear this podcast I need to mention, Ron Stidham and Pat, and Pat Clugston. Uh, they were the coaches for my junior team when I started out playing a long time ago. I wasn't the easiest kid to work with back then. You know, if you picture the ADHD poster child, you probably saw a picture of me uh, at that age. Uh, but those guys found a way to work with me, to put up with me and, and, and the nonsense that I would throw in their direction. Um, and they introduced me in a fun way to, to a game that, you know, to a game that really feels like home to me now. Uh, Damien Mullen and uh, Dennis Grogan, uh, two big hitting lefty Canadians um, who I played with in Preston. Um, my first taste of senior baseball and uh, really learnt so much from those guys. Uh, I probably learnt more playing with those guys than I did uh, with, at any other time in my career up until up until joining the GB program. Um, I've got to mention some of these brothers that I referred to before. Um, you know, DMB, um, Paul Smith, two of my closest friends. I uh, feel like we've we've grown in the game together. Um, it's been a pleasure, absolutely every minute of it. I managed uh, managed to share some uh, some travels uh, with with those guys too. Um, Jay Bax, what a guy! Only got to know him in 2017, but honestly, can't imagine life without him now. Uh, he he invited me on the first books trip. Uh, and what a guy he he's been! I it, it, yeah, thank you very much, mate. Um, I want to throw out some some rivals: uh, uh, Ben Pearson, Luke Armstrong, uh, and his dad Bruce, of course. The Oxford Kings, Manchester A's, uh, Hull. I need to mention uh, in particular Gavin and Kevin, but Barry, what a guy! Um, you know these are we've had the whole the Scorpions and the Trojans have gone head to head for for years and years, um, and at the bottom of all the rivalry there was always respect, um, and it's it's fantastic that that's, that, that 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 was able to to go for so long, um, and now we've got the you know the pretenders to the throne we've got the Bruins uh, the likes of. Uh, uh, Josh, Kelly, Charlie, Neil, Jamie—they've got a really uh, up and up and coming team uh, there at the moment. Keep pushing us, lads. Keep pushing us. Uh, your time will come. I'm sure of it. Um, I've not yet mentioned John Carter somehow. Um, you know his commitment to the game. Uh, you know is is unrivaled. Really, he's he's managed to basically make it his life's work to create opportunities for people to play baseball in in different countries who otherwise wouldn't. Um, so so many people Chris Gary Paul Mason Harry John Gill I haven't mentioned yet uh, Angela Emily Shaz so many people uh, I can't possibly remember everybody at this point in time but that's the point that's the wealth that has been brought into my life by British baseball it's the people it's the friends that I've made 
it's the contacts the com the, my comrades in the game and without this game i would never have, uh, have had those contacts so i just want to say uh thanks to everybody for for bit for being a part of british baseball uh with me uh, and if i can if i'm ever able to give back a fraction of what you guys have given to me over the years then uh, hopefully i'll leave the place uh leave the game a, a richer place than I, than i found it all those years ago you thought you got rid of me but there's no chance i can get off this without mentioning one more person and that is uh the man that made the trojans possible uh norman wells himself uh he was he, he actually was a grandfather to chris on the team but really he was all of our granddads uh he loved talking baseball with us he loved sharing war stories with us uh he loved a conversation with us about anything you know a pint of bitter at the end of the game dissecting the plays on the day uh the guy was uh the, the guy was so sharp till the very end um it was a real privilege and an honor to play uh for norman's trojans um, and we we will always be Norman's Trojans. Um, you know, t time time will will go on and memories will fade. But we're going to make sure that um, his legacy continues uh, on, on in on Merseyside in, in Liverpool. Um, and we want the uh, the club to keep growing. And um, I feel like if there's one man who who doesn't get the recognition that he that he that he, that he deserves in this country, it probably is Norman. He just did so much. He he was so committed to baseball uh, from 1946 right through until uh, right through until he died in in I think it was 20, 2016. Um, and there's it, it, he's just such a such a great man. Um, and I think I just couldn't sign off without without mentioning norman so i'll uh, uh i will leave it there now um but um yeah once again thank you uh thank you so much for, for for doing this matt thank you for the podcast uh thank you for giving us uh all an opportunity to to you know to to speak to a, a wider audience giving us this platform um and keep doing what you're doing we love listening thanks very much chris gary halts and trojans Hi Matt, uh, congratulations for getting to your 100th episode, uh, it's been a pleasure to listen to every week, um, doing a little video for you of what British baseball means to me. Uh, I'm Chris Gary. I've played for 21 years senior baseball with the Liverpool Trojans and I did a bit of youth with the Kirby Braves from the age of I think it was 11, 12. Um, baseball, British baseball is everything to me, it's my life, uh, I was born into it. Uh, being the grandson of uh, Norman Wells and the nephew of Norman Wells Jr. Both catches and one was a shortstop. Obviously, one's a British Baseball Hall of Fame, which is my granddad and my uncle was Great Britain's number one catcher uh, at the time in the 80s, 70s, 80s. British Baseball is the love of my life. Uh, I've played it non-stop and... As long as my arm can hold out and my knees barely work, I can carry on playing. Uh, I don't mind striking out every week and making 20 hours a game. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so, But as I say, British baseball is the best thing that could happen to anyone. And if anyone wants to get into it, please contact your nearest team. Cheers. Great friend of the show, now Cafferty. Hey, Matt. Good to speak again. Firstly, thanks for having me on such a poignant episode. What does baseball mean to me? Well, I'm Niall and I play for Tunbridge Baseball Club. Some of you may have heard me on previous episodes giving a roundup of our results this year. Initially, I was introduced to baseball when I was five. We were visiting family in Toronto who happened to be Blue Jays fans. And a large group of us went to the game and that was it. I was hooked. Aged five, it wasn't all about the game itself for me. It was about everything that goes with it. The journey to the ballpark, going for dinner before the game, the seventh inning stretch song, the whole event. It's now become a tradition whenever I return to tr Toronto to catch a Blue Jays game, usually now accompanied with a beer and poutine and probably a Blue Jays loss. Fast forward 16 years and after contacting the club, I turned up to a Tunbridge training session and what a great decision it turned out to be. Straight from the off, I felt like I had gained multiple new friends 
who welcomed me with open arms regardless of my ability. And that is why baseball will always be a huge part of my life. It doesn't matter about your ability, race, gender or anything like that. It is genuinely, genuinely a sport for all. And unfortunately for Tunbridge Baseball Club, six years down the line and even after moving 70 miles away, they can't get rid of me that easily. Cheers Matt and congratulations on your 100th episode and we'll speak soon. Hi Matt, it's John and Jason from Ball Caps and Bagpipes here. We want to thank you first off for giving us the opportunity to tell you what baseball means to us for your 100th episode. Well done and congratulations on reaching 100 on, in just under two years Cheers. I believe. Good job there. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're a workhorse, Matt, and I think the work that you do to promote British baseball is outstanding. Um, so with that in mind, Jason, what, what does baseball mean to you? Baseball is life for me. It's starting from a five-year-old and playing uh, softball and t-ball and then growing on to playing in high school to trying to walk on in college to coming to Scotland, which wouldn't have actually happened if I hadn't and met the guys with the Edinburgh Devon Devils. So uh, baseball is pretty much life. I definitely would not have had this career path where I am now if it wasn't for it. And and I think you know it's it's quite a good community of people that are out there, and it's always fun to meet everyone who's a big baseball fan. Yeah, um, now you say baseball's life. Uh, baseball for me is a, a game that, in a sense, helped save my life. Um, I don't think it's any secret that over the past few years I've uh, had some problems with my mental health, um, and I think that one of the key aspects of getting me back on kilter was uh, being on the bench with my teammates and being at the ballpark every week and, and being able to do this show every week with you. Um, keeps me kind of going as well. Uh, so baseball for me has been that refuge and has given me a sense of community that I never really experienced anywhere else. I'm not much of a people person, <laughs> as you know, Jason. Um, but, uh, you know, being among like-minded like, like -minded people and talking baseball, playing baseball, um, and just being involved in this extraordinary community we have, not just in Scotland, but UK-wide, and obviously uh, with the guys over in the States, uh, the guys and girls over in the States that we've uh, managed to... We've met a lot of friends yeah. through baseball there, and uh, I'm hoping to make a bunch more there. So, uh, definitely. Uh, well, just thanks again, Matt. I really appreciate everything you've done out there from um, this even retweeting us to mentioning us out there, and uh, looking forward to actually meeting up with you someday soon. Here's to the next 100. Hey, I'm Max Whittle. I co host Bases Covered, the show on MLB's YouTube channel, and baseball means so much to me. I'm going to tell you two stories about why. First of all, I think it's the first American sport that me and my family bonded over, particularly with my dad. I remember going to Boston when I was just nine years of age and we drove past Fenway Park. I remember seeing the Green Monster. We tried to get tickets for a Red Sox game. We couldn't and that showed me the popularity of the sport. But me and my dad kept watching baseball together on TV in America. We didn't know how long a game was. We didn't know who any of the teams were or the players were. But for some reason, baseball brought us together even more than we already were. So. That was one thing and even now he'll text me and I'm working in baseball so everything is so much more familiar with, my, with me but my dad will text me and say Red Sox Yankees at Fenway BT Sport 7 o'clock like he'll be watching it or he'll be about to watch it so it really has us connected and the second story I have a photo in my room here uh, at Fenway all those years later this was 2015 so what, 12 years after I first drove past it and tried to get tickets. It's the day that I met Don Banks and Peter King, two of my favourite NFL writers. Don has since passed away. I got to spend a whole evening with them at, at Fenway Park. They got me seats that I hadn't bought. I bought a ticket in the upper deck. I was going to sit and watch the game on my own. I bumped into Don. He introduced me to Peter, two of my absolute heroes. And this is why baseball is so great. You get to go to a game and bond with people. You don't even have to watch it if you don't want to, but you can drink, you can eat, you can have fun. Beautiful setting. The stadiums are lovely. So those are the stories that really mean so much to me and why I'm grateful for the game. And I'm so blessed that I now get to work on this sport in the industry that I love for Major League Baseball. I get the gear as well. And of course, waking up every morning for six, seven, eight months, checking the box scores, checking the scores. It fills your day. It's something to talk about. I love the speed and the sound of baseball and the smell, probably. Aaron Atkins, Manchester Baseball Club. Baseball to me means getting to stand in the sun or rain and enjoy the most beautiful game on earth with your family, your required family of 15, or I guess in our case, 25 to 30 close friends and hear the crack of a bat, the pop of a mitt and feel satisfied and happy and laugh and tell jokes and 
lose brutally, but still enjoy doing it. Seeing yourself get better at throwing a ball, catching a ball, hitting a ball, and just getting to know some really great guys. There's nothing better than enjoying nature and slowing down in our society that's so fast and so instantly gratified, being able to slow down and enjoy a slow game and enjoy the company of people that you really like being around. Baseball means a lot to me, moving from the States to England and enjoying something that reminds me a lot of home without just exclusively wanting to be home, getting to enjoy living here while enjoying something that I used to enjoy at home, something I used to enjoy in my childhood. I get to remember my dad and the little league games I used to play and get to share that experience and those memories with a lot of really great guys, a lot of close friends and what I would call acquired family. Baseball means a lot. It means sharing MLB games, talking about your team, making fun of randos from Blackburn that's for some reason like the Brewers. And once again, just enjoying the company. Baseball means a lot. Hi, I'm Chris from Baseball Softball UK. When Matt asked me what baseball meant to me, um, it was quite a challenging question because baseball has just meant so much to me throughout the years. I started playing when I was uh, seven or eight years old. I stopped playing when I was 19, when I was no longer good enough to play. And from there, I went into broadcasting and working around the sports. I grew up around baseball. It was always a major presence with my dad, who played when he was in college, and my grandfather, who was a lifelong Cubs fan. Uh, another grandfather was a lifelong Yankees fan. And I grew up in Boston as a Red Sox fan. So it was always present both on and off the field for me. It's created so many opportunities for me, whether it was broadcasting and, and working in the travel and actually being the director of baseball operations in New Britain or the London series in 2019 through BSUK, who then made it possible for me to come all the way over to the UK to help promote the sport that I love so much. It's opened doors, it's given me a career, but most importantly of all, it's created so many lifelong connections between myself, family, friends, players, you name it. Uh, it has created connections that I could not have found anywhere else had I tried. Baseball means a number of things to me. Um, as the quote from Field of Dreams goes, the one constant through all the years has been baseball. But I really think that the connections made through the sport are what makes it so special. What's happening? Danny Quinn here, number 15 center fielder, aspiring bullpen arm for the Glasgow Comets. Hard to say what baseball means to me. You know, I took a 14-year gap out and came back and just couldn't believe I ever left. Um, when I'm on that field, I don't care about anything else but catching that ball or hitting it or throwing it or making that play, man. I live for the weekend and I breathe the sport, man. I love baseball. This is being read on behalf of Mark Salter. Hello, my name is Mark Salter and I'm a baseball addict. For those that know me in and around British baseball, then some of this will not really come as a surprise. To those that don't, please indulge me in this pricey of my baseball journey. I found baseball in essence in 1986 at Fenway Park while staying with friends in Rhode Island and I became a Red Sox nation for life. This game gets you hooked so easily, and of course, I grabbed a real glove as soon as I could find one, and with a tennis ball and a wall, just got on with it. I lived in Valley Forge, PA, in 1990-1991, so being guilty by association, the Phillies became my other team, and because they were perennially rubbish, TBS saved me with Braves games every day. I watched Maddox become a veritable legend via te televisual box. I got home and an ad to set up a new baseball team in Bracknell was all I needed to get me started. Along with Paul Vernon and co, who I know from our football days, we began what is now a 30 years plus journey. I've played, coached, umpired, administered and watched baseball, and currently softball, more than any sane person should. I've coached from T-ball to adult national finals and players who have gone on to represent their country and I've encouraged everyone, from those with no idea, to girls to play before it became the norm. 
plus a past BBF president. I have travelled the world and made many friends through communicating the language of the diamond and the ballpark. I also had the fortune to be both involved in the discussions about the signing of the plans for Farnham Park, believe me, it was an honour to be involved, and to be invited back to witness the official opening. That place is one of the best things to crow about when it comes to baseball in this country. Baseball filled a void in me across the years when I was both euphoric and dysphoric, but it was there and it gave me oxygen. It is a pain in the derriere and a lifelong love. There is an inherent toxic toxicity, unfortunately, but there are also many who love the game and who through their endeavours will overcome, I'm sure of it. I'm Luis Vargas from the Dominican Republic and I have lived in England for five years and I love baseball because is a big sport in my country. And I really miss playing when I moved to England. And I was so happy to learn they are a team in England. And my close team home is Manchester. So I travel over the one hour to play because I really enjoy so much that game. Um, my favorite position is to play infield. So baseball mean to me everything. So I want to say thank you to British Baseball to let me enjoy with them and the team. So thank you very much and baseball for life. Uh, James, I play for Birmingham Metalheads. I've been playing for the club for quite a long time since they were the Bandits and Outlaws. I play in right field. And what can I say? I've loved every minute of it. What got me started on baseball was the Sandlot Kids. I just loved that film growing up, that and Space Jam. I'm a two favourite films still to go back to in there. And I've always been a diehard Yankees fan. Sorry about the Babe Roof, what got me started. Some people say I'm like him because I always wear pinstripes and a pinstripe jersey. I wish, but I, honestly, I do wear the pinstripe trousers. Some say it's a mental breakdown, but to me, it's just baseball lifestyle. And um, yeah, congratulations to British Baseball on their 100th episode. Keep up the good work, guys. I'm so happy to see the sport grow and grow in this country. Um, hopefully, we have another London series to talk about in the future and um, yeah stay safe everybody keep up the good work um, British Faithful and Birmingham Metalheads for the horns Vince Warner Hi well, Matt congratulations on your 100th podcast I'm sure there's going to be plenty more to hear um, my name's Vince Warner I'm from the Essex Redbacks I started playing in 1974 for Thames Bald Mills following my father's footsteps and of all the sports that I've played, baseball is by far the best. The biggest thing for me is baseball over the years. I've been lucky enough to play in many countries, uh, make a huge amount of friends, and playing in the GB squad in my early days for six years. I love baseball. Uh, it's such a challenging sport that requires a lot of physical attributes to be good, with throwing, batting, fielding and running all needed to be mastered. However, the one part of baseball that really needs to be trained the most is the brain. So without that skill, you're never going to know what to do and when to do it. I'm um, looking forward to doing a full podcast with you. And uh, until then, uh, well, take care. Great sports with the show, Phil Carris. So congratulations, Matt, on your 100th episode. Very well done, mate. I've been following it since day one. Uh, I remember you doing one of them, I think, if it if it wasn't the first one, it was very early on, one in your car on your lunch break, I believe. So obviously from where your podcast was and where it is now is absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you for asking me to sort of say a couple of things about why I'm grateful to the game of baseball. Um, and obviously nobody knows me, but I'm one of the parents um, down at Redbacks Baseball Club in Essex. Um, and I have to say, I'm just very grateful for 
baseball in its community and how welcoming it is. Um, my son has joined since I think to sort of late 2019. Um, we had the pandemic, so we've 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 been stopped starting down there at the youth club, and we've seen members come and go. Uh, I think probably part and parcel of the COVID um, <laughs> experience, I suppose. But um, coming away from that anyway, the negative, the positive um, thing is that yeah, it's just been such an amazing experience from day one, really, from meeting Sean and Dennis down there, uh, the way the other parents help out down there and, you know, just to watch what the children get out of it is unbelievable and what the guys do down there, it's just such, you can't really put into words and those uh, those of us that sort of work um, within the baseball community and, you know, go to training and games and stuff, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the, there's no animosity towards another team. In fact, you know, the complete opposite. You're cheering on the other team and you're just willing them all to, to do well. Obviously, there's competition, um, but by and large, you know, we're, we're just a family. And, um, you know, who can't be grateful for that? You know, I'm always grateful for that, especially to see what my son gets out of it. Um, and yeah, it's just been an amazing experience and one that's so infectious and you want to tell everyone about and and you do, you do tell everyone about it. Um, and yeah, it's there's not really much more to say apart from, you know, every week uh, with training and such, um, you, you know, it's just more, more infectious really. Um, obviously, I've spoken to you, Matt, and you're a great guy. I think your podcast is absolutely fantastic. Uh, some of the guests you've had on have just been unbelievable, sharing their experiences and, you know, how honest they are. Um, and, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing, buddy. And thank you, Matt, and thank you, Baseball. Shot as well? Orange shot. Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, yeah, so this is for Matt Mutton. I'm Neil Rowley. Two of the things I love most about baseball. baseball. <laughs> 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 okay. okay, I'm Neil Rowley and two of the things I love most about baseball are watching people fall in love with the game and baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, now take your phone. Hi, I'm Fiona from Glasgow Galaxy, uh, currently on game day in Edinburgh. Um, so yeah, just the reason why I love baseball is one, our team. Our team is amazing and we have so many different people from different backgrounds, different countries and we have so much to bring to each other. It's just great to just learn from everyone. Um, I am literally learning something new every day, every game and it's never a dull moment um, because you just never know what's going to happen. We are currently winning so this is great. Um, but yeah, just meeting all the different people and just on a personal level, just improving all the time, it just allows you that kind of good self-esteem and, and, and continue to learn. Um, so yeah, um, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Hello, my name is Earl. I play baseball most of my life and I'm retired from playing now. We all have our favourite sports and baseball is a sport that ignited my imagination. Baseball is a sport that made me dream. Baseball is a sport that got me through the week, made me long for practice, made me long for turning up to games. Everything about the game, putting on my uniform, wearing my number on my shirt. And what I loved about um, baseball most was going up to bat, standing in the batter's box when it was just you and the ball. And you're just in that moment, in that zone, and hitting line drives over the infield. There was something really special about um, that ball flying over into the outfield and the, um, the, the, the contact that the bat made with the ball, it was almost inconsequential as you just swung through, ran up to first base and then stopped and had to look and see what effect your hit had. The very few uh, home runs I hit, I remember it was like just being in, in that zone, your mind, your body, everything just working as one and the you you just didn't feel the contact it was like your bat was covered in feathers 
and the ball was swarming over the fence. Those are the things that made me feel, made me dream, made me feel awake and alive. And the other thing that, that I remember is um, on my way home, whether I was driving or on the train, there was a time when, when I remembered um, that I just spent the day completely away from the world, outside all the, 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 the issues and problems, and I was just in that baseball bubble with uh, my comrades on the field. And, um, and, and I realised that um, those were the things that, that brought meaning and value to my life. So yeah, that's what baseball meant to me. Hello to all the British baseball viewers uh, and listeners. My name is Charlie and I play baseball for the Newton Abbott Brewers in the West Country Baseball League. Um, so I got into baseball in 2016 when I was on holiday with my family in Florida. They uh, treated us out to an even out to a surprise and it was to watch a baseball game between the Tampa Bay Rays and the New York Yankees, hence the Yankee stuff. Um, Ever since that moment, I just I, I fell in love with the game of baseball itself. Um, I just knew that it's, I wanted to play it. Uh, I wanted to make it a big, big part of my life. Um, so when I got back to the villa, I uh, got onto the internet and I typed in Google um, baseball Newton Abbott, uh, not thinking anything would come up. Um, and the first result was the Newton Abbott Brewers Facebook page. Now, when I first saw this, I thought that it was going to be uh, a team in America, and uh, one of the local ones close to where we were staying. But when I clicked on it and found out that actually they trained just down the road from me, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and when I got back off holiday, I went to my first training session with them, and uh, I've never looked back since then. I've, um, yeah, so I'm, I've been playing, playing for a good uh, five years now, if you can count last year anyway. Um, and the, the reason I think the reason why I fell in love with the game is because you don't have to be. Uh, the fastest or the strongest, the most athletic to be good. Um, it's you know, it's a game where if if you know what you're doing and you can get your steps right, you can you know get a technique down that you can become better than somebody who can you know just throw the ball a bit harder than you. Um, and on top of that, all the all the guys at the club when I started were just so well uh, welcoming. It was it was like I've been a part of the team for years already. It, it didn't feel like I had to try and try and fit in and. You know, join a new club. It, it felt like it was it was meant to happen. Um, and British baseball for me is you know I yeah so we only get to play for a few months of the year. Um, and that's only if the weather holds up. Uh, so I I try and you know make the most of every game that we get, and I think that helps me appreciate it more. Is that yeah we only get maybe ten to twelve games a year, um, and then it's over for another few months, and we have to train in you know inside a sports or where. You can't really do much, and you kind of just just trying to stay active and get by to the next season. So it's, I think, one of the reasons why I appreciate the British baseball so much is, for, well, mainly for that reason, um, but also because it's yeah, it gave me gave me something to do, uh, something to try and work towards and try and improve. Um, and if I'm being quite frank, I think baseball saved my life as well. Um, so. Yeah, I, I feel like I owe owe a lot to it and owe a lot to the game, so I always, I'm always trying to put the work in, um, whether it's set training, uh, with the team, or whether it's in the garden at home uh, in the off season or the days that we we just don't have a session. Um, and yeah, I think that that's that's that the main reason why I love this game and why I love it is it's given me so many good experiences to to treasure forever. I met some amazing guys. Made some really, really good friends. Um, and uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. Hi everyone, this is Dave, a.k.a. Hayes Unit, on Twitter. I would like to say congratulations to uh, Matt on his uh, fantastic podcast um, on British baseball. I'll be honest with you, I'm a new fan. And um, it's only since I've joined BT Sport. And I came home on late shifts one evening and uh, baseball was on. And I was watching it, I'm thinking, actually, I really like this. As you can see by my shirt, I'm an NFL fan, especially the Bears. Well, only the Bears. Um, baseball never really caught my attention before. So when I started watching it, I really got into it. 
I was also wondering if there was any other people in England, UK, Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, if um, they were interested in baseball as well. And I came across uh, Matt, who was uh, just starting out on his podcast, The Crusade. And to be honest with you, uh, when he first started, you know this, Matt, I believe he did the first few pods from his uh, car on his lunch break at work. And But I was hooked. I'll be honest with you, I was hooked. And I don't know, on Twitter, it's a brilliant format. And so many people got into Matt's uh, podcast, and I've made so many friends from it. And also, like Matt, um, I never really had a team uh, to follow, especially in the uh, in the in the states. Now, as you can see, I'm a Bears fan. So, did I go Sox or did I go Cubs? I'll be honest with you, I'm a funny type of bloke, and I decided to upset all of them, and I went for the Cardinals. And I love the Cardinals, and the amount of interaction through baseball. Um, with the Cardinals is phenomenal and I'd like to say thank you to Matt for uniting so many British fans with baseball around the country I've made so many friends from it and I have so much banter and the the, the actual quality of the podcast is fantastic and some of the coaches uh, the players and other guests that you've had on there are really good uh, keep it going mate I know it's hard work and I'll be honest with you it's taken me about 10 goes to make this uh, video for you um, I will send you a few dodgy ones uh, a bit sweary but keep up the good work mate um, I love it all the best bro hey I'm Bruce Webb and this is for the British Baseball podcast what does British Baseball mean to me well I love this game you know, the same as all of you I, I, I wake up on a Sunday and want to go and play baseball that's just that's just what I want to do. Um, it's my release. It's my escape. But I love the competition involved in baseball. So British baseball for me has been a journey. I started playing baseball in the UK literally the weekend that we arrived. So 2016, we arrived the last week of June, I think. Um, I think we arrived on a Saturday morning. We flew in. I was playing baseball for Bracknell on Sunday. So less than 24 hours after I was in the country, I was in the game. Um, I pitched, caught, played shortstop, all kinds of things in that game. But it was just a you know brilliant, uh, you know, entry for me. Um, after you know t taking a little bit of a a break from baseball in South Africa a couple of years before that, I'm grateful to the game because it's taught me a lot. It's taught me a lot of life skills. It's taught me to be responsible. Um, you know, when you're on the baseball field, it's not about an individual. It's about the team. But you have. You have a responsibility to your team to do the best you can do for them. Now, you know that 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 goes in different, you know, in in you know in different turns and roundabouts. So there isn't going to ever be a situation where you'll play baseball where one player will carry the team. And this is why I'm so grateful to the game because everybody must contribute. You know, I'm also grateful, and probably I'm I'm more grateful, the most grateful to the game for the relationships and friends that I've made out of it. So to all of you watching, I probably know a lot of a lot of people watching or listening to the podcast that I've 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 met, you know, simply by moving to a new country um and you know just picking up the game that we all know and love. And you know, those relationships that I've built, I I intend to, to carry forward for the rest of my life. So I'm grateful to all of you for, you know, just making those relationships with me and, you know, just keeping my interest in the game just absolutely at 100%. Hi, Joe Stewart, catch chef of Norwich Icini Warriors. And for me, baseball is about having that perfect blend between a competitive sport and a fun social event. It's uh, fantastic to just go out with a great group of people who you know, love the sport, really get along with each other, but also really want to better themselves, put themselves forward. So for me, it's a great sport to do that because there's so many different people that can get involved. It's really easy for all kinds of demographics. And yeah, for me, it's been a real big passion of mine for many years now. Uh, I've been playing for at least 10 years since uh, university and just really enjoyed it all the way through. Really glad to keep going at it and I'm really proud of my team. They're always, always up for it whenever how, whatever result is, they're always laughing and enjoying it themselves. And most people in the same uh, league as us, we know we have a really great league that we play in the EEBL, and all the teams there are just fantastic, really fun to play against. Hello, I'm Mike Finnegan, 
Uh, Finn to my friends uh, is a play for the Stavish Titans, conveniently positioned hat. The Mighty Titans, um, they're run by uh, a committee, uh, as Drew, um, Kev Wilson, Chris Hunton, uh, and a few other really, really top guys. Um, the team, uh, brilliant, really enjoy playing with them, senior, junior players, male and female, um, got such a heart and spirit. That really sums up baseball for me and the love of baseball. Um, so yeah, about me, started playing softball at seven, played baseball up into the age of 13, 14, in a scouting league of all things, uh, as in the Cub Scouts um, and then the Scouts. But then the lack of infrastructure, uh, it goes without saying, uh, you just take what you can. Uh, that was in the 90s, loved all the baseball movies from the 80s and 90s, Field of Dreams, obviously. Um, Mr. Baseball, um, that's a good one. Uh, Rookie of the Year, Major League, blah, 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 so on and so forth, and some of the more modern films. But um, yeah, uh, continue to watch bits and pieces over the time. Life happens as it does. Uh, had a slight change in personal circumstance from a health perspective. Um, so I changed my, my work role. Not too, too personal, but it allowed to free up more time for baseball. Um, so I've been able to uh, do more in and around the baseball community, um, both uh, locally um, and for myself, personal development really, so both on and off the field, um, which I enjoyed both. Um, big shout out to Westminster Baseball League, uh, which the Titans, established Titans are part of. Um, they're going from absolute strength to strength as an independent league. Um, and yeah, whether you are part of the BBF or whether you're more independent, uh, one thing that unites us all, ties us all together, is that sheer love and spirit. And I guess we, uh, it's the soul of baseball, that intangible quality that, that you, you can't quite, uh, well, I certainly can't. Um, eloquently put um i certainly can't put into words or articulate very well uh, so apologies about that <laughs> but yeah it, it's it's the love of baseball uh, nothing more nothing less um and i hopefully uh see some of you soon uh, at the end of the season and maybe nationally uh, next year um and yeah uh, here's to the next 10 years really under the london series 2023 plus what is it 2026 2027 um so yeah exciting times um and if we have characters like matt bringing it all together along with all the logistical um hard work that goes on and off the field from every single team in every single league um then i think we can't go far wrong uh, and we can you know put that the obvious elephant in the room the politics to one side and let's just you know get back to good old stall ball as they uh, used to call it um anyway um all the best guys and girls um just yeah really looking forward to the future take care um i'm currently at university and i'm originally from the u.s so being able to play baseball here in england has absolutely meant the world to me I feel more at home than I could ever have wished for, and these people have become my friends and my family. Um, also being able to play for the women's team, the Cambridge Valkyries, alongside other women, has been absolutely amazing. What's up, British Baseball Podcast? My name's Nathan, and I'm the head coach of the Birmingham Metalheads. Baseball's meant a lot to me over the last few years, and particularly when I was starting university, um, I remember seeing the uh, Coventry Red Arrows baseball team on the university website and being filled with excitement as someone who's played cricket my entire life up until that point, um, being able to see a sport like baseball and just sort of consider myself able to go and do it um, and be able to get involved in that environment. I've always been passionate about America um, and about uh, that side of America as well, just baseball as a whole. The sporting um, <coughs> areas over there are really, really fun for me. Um, and being able to do it in the UK has been a great, great pleasure. Um, so after I graduated university, I got more involved with the Birmingham side of things. And this team has been phenomenal for me. Just a team that has so much love for the game, so much love for each other. Um, and it's just great to see, especially coming from cricket, where it's a bit sort of, uh, in my opinion, a little bit uptight. The people are a bit involved in, you know, the way the game's played and it's a bit slower. Um, 
I much prefer the approach that we've taken to baseball, uh, which is that we're trying to have fun at all costs, but we're trying to be competitive at all costs too. Um, and it's fueled the big competitive side of me that I have, but as well as that, it's also managed to fuel uh, the great interpersonal side. I've met some amazing people, some of my closest friends through baseball, um, and uh, I've just been honoured and privileged and just so, so happy to be involved with British baseball over the last few years. Not to mention as well, I've seen the evolution of uh, such things as women's baseball, um, which devolved from a scene where we had absolutely nothing a few years ago um, to now having teams in the West Midlands Baseball League that are cropping up with women's teams every week. Um, and it is just really, really nice to see that evolution of the game. Um, and it's great to see a big future in it. It's one of those sports that you would consider to be quite niche. It's not like there's baseball parks in every field, um, but uh, we are seeing a really great, almost a renaissance of baseball in this country. And uh, I'm really, really excited to be a big part of that in the next few seasons. So if you're ever in the Birmingham area and you want to play some baseball, um, you know which metalheads you've got to hit up. Hey, so Matt asked me, along with a lot of other people, to uh, record a short video about uh, what we're thankful for or grateful for to the game of, of baseball. So um, I'm going to kick off with everything. And I know it's cliche to say that baseball is life, but I guess for me, and probably a lot of other people, baseball really has been life or has been a large contributor to their lives. So I really am thankful for everything it's done for me and the influence it's had on my life, from the friends I've made, to the places I've been able to travel, the mentors that I've had over the years who, who quite frankly have made me, um, not just as a baseball, a former player and now a coach, but also even a, even a man. Um, and then my family as well. You know, my parents were instrumental in the beginning of you know, my career, you know, being the uh, the taxi service that all the young people have from their parents, as well as their support. Uh, my wife, whom I didn't meet through baseball, but through a shared passion for performance sport, probably helped her to understand me a little bit more. Um, and then, of course, now my children uh, and getting to bond through uh, baseball. Um, as part of my relationship with them is, is a wonderful experience. Um, I suppose when you think about the reflections on life, or rather the, the role that baseball plays as a, as a reflection of life, there are kind of, I guess, four things that I, I think of that stand out for me. And number one would be that a hard, what, it, what hard work means and what it takes, it takes what it takes. And there's that wonderful quote in A League of Their Own where Tom Hanks is explaining to Gina Davis's character that it is the hard that makes it great because if it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. And I think that's such a true uh, reflection of not just baseball, but life. And I can't think of a sport that's better place to teach that. Um, the next one is that sometimes no matter how hard you work, you're still going to lose. And again, that's another really important point to learn. And Baseball teaches you that really early on. Uh, the value of being a good teammate and also what it means to have good teammates. And then finally, because of the way baseball as a sport is structured, the, the importance and the skill required to be a pitcher or a hitter, um, you can be really good at one thing and still add value to your team. Of course, it helps to be a generalist, and there are going to be superstars like Mookie Betts and Mike Trout who just feel like they can do anything and everything. But at the same token, uh, there's going to be someone who can throw a ball really, really hard, and that's going to be enough to get them to the top of the game. There's going to be another player who can run fast, and that's going to afford them to be uh, have a role on their team. Equally, you might not be the best player in the, in the world, but if you can inspire children in your local community to pick up a glove and a bat for the first time and then stay in the game, then you've done a service to the sport that um, is is almost immeasurable. So that's what I love maybe most about baseball is you don't have to be good at everything in order to con contribute to the sport and, and to your team. Um, I know Matt wanted us to keep it short, but I'm gonna try and rattle through these as quick as possible. Um, I've got some thank yous for all the people that have made uh, baseball what it is to me so from the coaching side uh, I've got Margaret Borley who I think everyone knows my relationship with Margaret and how important she was to me at Tunbridge Baseball John O'Neill who was my first Little League coach Craig Savage Paul Vernon Vince Garcia Ken Bowman Stefan Rapaglia 
Gary Roberts and Trey Hendricks and then of course also Drew Spencer um, not everyone may know this but I actually played for Drew for about three or four days before my knees uh, gave out and that was a an amazing experience for, for me and my career then to get to experience to be coached by Drew so that was awesome um, and then also Alan Dean like you, you probably know Alan and I from our GB work together and our smart performance baseball uh, work but Alan was my strength coach um, when I probably when I needed him most in preparation for the 2009 World Cup uh, so yeah without Alan I'd, you know, I, I wouldn't have had that opportunity to, to play for GB at the at the at the highest level for friends and mentors side as obviously Nick Carter and Alex Malahoudis from Tunbridge Josh Chetwind Jimmy Gothels who was my mentor in college Liam Carroll Zach Grafser uh, Bill Holmberg uh, you know unfortunately we lost him last year but he was a, a huge influence on me um, you know, over the last three to four years Tom Gillespie John Boyd Brad Marcelino you can't say thank you if you don't mention Gavin Marshall and then of course I also had a couple friends from from university my, my Menlo days Scott Bowman and Ben Hicks as well um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, the GB family I already mentioned Drew and, and uh, several of the other coaches uh, who were involved but I really want to say thank you to the Ops guys uh, you know with Glenn Robertson Rich Minford Jordan Edmonds Brian Lanoff and the work he does with the U12s, Ryan Turtle, um, and also Phil Edmonds, who was my operations manager during my tenure as the uh, U18 head coach. You know, without them, it, nothing really happens. Like Flights don't get booked, hotels aren't sorted, and we always think about the X's and O's and the at-bats and the results on the ground, but it's the ops guys that, that really uh, keep the machine running, so I want to do a big thank you to them. Obviously, a huge thank you to my family, my wife, who continues to support me, uh, my mum and dad who were there from the beginning and then my brother George who was the person I played catch with down the wreck uh, when it was uh, chucking down rain in December over the Christmas holidays when everyone else was having Christmas pudding and opening up extra presents and we were down on the field playing catch so big shout out to, to George and then finally I want to say thank you uh, to the people who make stuff like this possible uh, Matt Mutton and the work you do at the British Baseball Podcast uh, the the team at Batflits and Nerbs and also uh, everyone at Birds with Balls and quite frankly anyone who is a coach or a volunteer in British baseball if it wasn't for you none of this would happen and so thank you for making British baseball uh, stronger than it than it has been and continues to be stronger than it ever will be and will continue to grow and grow and I couldn't be more excited to be a part of this community so thanks to everyone and i can't wait to see what we get done in the next 10 years in the next 20 years who knows you know, however long it takes can't wait to be on this journey with all of you so thank you very much my name is tyler cote i'm an american from new york state and i played up to the high school level in the u.s and i put in three seasons in France starting 2016 and moved to Britain to play my first season, the COVID season, just last year. So British baseball to me is my sense of community. I joined up with the London Mets and uh, even in the midst of a global pandemic, I managed to uh, make what I think are some really great friends uh, on the field, off the field, and um, that opens up the whole of not just you know baseball together, but all of uh, what I can experience in English culture. Um, it's like my my doorway into into living in this country, really having a social life, and. What baseball affords to me is the opportunity to give back. I've had the pleasure of playing a lot of baseball in my day. I have a bit of a bit of advice, wisdom, and experience to pass on to those who may be newer to the game, uh, and that's that's what I can give back into the community. Uh, so for me. That's what it's all about. It's all about that community, having a good time and meeting up for a uh, uh, collaborative purpose. Hello, my name is Tom Sayward and I'm a GB Senior International Baseball Umpire. 
Baseball has taken me absolutely everywhere in the world. It has been one of those things that has meant a whole load of world in my life. I've umpired in over 20 countries. I've umpired up to World Cup level training games, the World Cup in 2009 and numerous international assignments in Europe and across the world. It is just something that has such a great community and amongst the umpires, the brotherhood of umpires is just absolutely everything. Baseball is a complicated game, is a game of angles. It has so many differing opinions and way, thoughts of ways it should be played. But as my mentor said, umpiring is role play. You've just got to fulfill those roles as best you can and to take account of what may come. Remember, the chief enemy of an umpire is surprise. I suspect it's also the chief enemy of any player too. You've got to go there prepared and remember that competence breeds confidence and confidence breeds competence. When I started umpiring, I was useless. I didn't realize it. I took myself out, I went to the States and I went to umpire school. From there, I have gained a whole host of people worldwide. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be in baseball. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be talking to you. So remember, baseball, if you take the time to learn it and to do it well, is absolutely gold. I might add that given when I was at school, I hated sport at school. Getting involved in baseball has made me feel immensely proud that I've represented my own country, having absolutely been a dunce at the sport. Now, I can look back at it and say, I did that. I'm approaching a thousand games in the sport as an official. I don't know what I'll do after a thousand games, but I look back with it and say, I had got off my arse and I did something about it. In fact, when I was thinking about going to umpire school, I asked my boss for five weeks unpaid leave. He said to me, that's equivalent of leaving the company. I turned around and said, bye bye, and I left the company. Now I'll look back at it and said, well, I didn't take a risk for nothing. In fact, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Yes, I down on income, but I'll look back at it and say, I'm happy. What's up everyone? I'm Ren Quantrill. I'm an outfielder for Baseball Scotland, the Edinburgh Cannons, uh, Great Britain Baseball, and now I'm playing my baseball with the London Legends in the NBL. Uh, why I am grateful for British baseball Starting off in Baseball Scotland at 16, uh, it was an amazing experience being thrown into such a diverse league, um, playing with people and against people from all different backgrounds, of all ages, from all over the world, different abilities. Uh, it was an amazing experience, not just uh, as a baseball player, but in life as well. Uh, what it's given me uh, is, is second to none. I, I'm so grateful for it. I uh, made friends for life. and. Uh, from as a, as a, a young ball player, a young person, um, couldn't ask for any more, um, and I'm really I'm really proud of that. Um, and then the confidence it gave me, uh, meeting new people, to then in the pandemic drive down every weekend to play in the NBL with the Lancashire Legends and, and meet those guys. So um, long may those opportunities continue. But uh, I yeah I'm so happy to. Um, have had all those experiences and, and the opportunities that they're giving me now. Uh, and why I'm grateful to the game of baseball, um, it's become such a huge part of my life uh, and I wouldn't, wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, the opportunities uh, to have something I'm so passionate about and working towards uh, the, the goals I've set myself, especially over the last year, uh, I'm so grateful to have a passion um, when life you know it got, it got really difficult and uh having something to work towards really 
was uh, a really good escapism for me um, when, yeah, life, life was tricky. So uh, I'll be forever grateful for it then and uh, having goals to work towards for, for the future. Well, I suppose I better do one of these then. Hello, hi, Matthew. I do a podcast called the British Baseball Podcast. Um, thanks to everyone that's sent these videos over to those that, that weren't able to do so um, because time just wasn't our friends. There's always time in future. Uh, this little segment can be dedicated on the YouTube channel for everyone's baseball love stories. So even if you want to send something over, just send it to British Baseball Podcast at gmail.com and I'll put it on there. Um, so I originally wasn't going to do one of these um, and then I kind of got talked into it. So what does baseball mean to me and why am I grateful to the game? Um, firstly, thanks to Drew Spencer for doing the grateful to the game um, hashtag on Twitter. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. People sharing these stories and that I asked him if I could do this as the 100th episode because I thought it'd be a great way to just celebrate and let everyone share what I love about the game. So uh, baseball had kind of been in my uh, my life in the background for as long as I can remember. Um, but the older I got, the more it became more of a hum in the background. I can think of many times in the past where baseball has been there or thereabouts in some sort of shape or form, whether it be in a, a video game that I used to play by myself as a kid, um, playing it some form of it in my mate's back garden with makeshift equipment, making up our own rules and because we didn't know what they were. Um, something that was enjoyed with friends. It was a desired present in the form of a glove, um, a different sport to be watched on TV when a new channel called Channel 5. But that was all it was until the summer of 2019. So a few years earlier, I'd become a dad. And I was also suffering with the aftermath of a life-changing head injury where I had headaches, fatigue, sleep issues, deficits in attention and concentration, depression and anxiety, not wanting to get out of bed in the morning, but having to do so, um, lacking in, in initiative, motivation. My short-term memory is still affected to this day. Uh, struggling with getting words out, uh, information processing. I've had to change how I think how I learn and how I remember things. I became withdrawn and I found it really hard to talk to my friends and uh, just socializing in general, um, not being able to engage people in conversation. When I used to be a conversation starter, um, but now I was just someone that stood on the, on the outside and just drifted through an evening and trying hard to avoid people and not being able to look them in the eyes. And to add to all this, uh, I had a personality change. Um, my partner said that she fell in love with an awesome person, but then she had to fall in love with another awesome person. So luckily, uh, I appear to have remained awesome, um, but uh, I was I was lost. Um, I couldn't really do things that I enjoyed more, like cooking. Uh, I couldn't do the sports I love, like ice hockey or, or boxing. Uh, my writing, I was trying to write kids' books, um, trying being the big word there, but then my writing became non-existent. Uh, I'd lost my career um, and I also lost my sense of taste and smell, which has gotten a little bit better over time. But overall, I was just frustrated and I didn't have much sense of worth. Then along came the 2019 MLB London series. And after catching the advert for it on the BBC, um, I really had no idea that the game was taking part. So I Googled the ticket prices and that's where I stumbled across Manchester Baseball Club on their social media and saw they were having like a, an open day sort of event and that they're going to be watching the game at their clubhouse. Uh, seeing this as a vastly cheaper option uh, and also a day out with my son and my mate, uh, we went down to the clubhouse in Withenshaw and we were all of us were greeted with open arms uh, by John Eaton and uh, Dave and a few other players and their families and we played catch and we chatted about baseball and the training and the team. And I just loved how they made like a massive fuss over my little boy and um, helping him hold the ball, uh, throwing and just playing baseball stuff with him. It was really, really cool. And it was a great afternoon and one that would set in motion a whole load of events that leads to this day. Although I wasn't able to attend the evening sessions for that season, 
Uh, Me and Little went to Willenshaw Park uh, on Sunday as often as possible to cheer on the Manchester A's or the B's, depending on who was playing at home. Uh, Staying true to my word, I attended the indoor December training sessions, uh, trying and failing to befriend J-Rod, who was there. Um, I put as much as I could into that day, and I had the best time. I couldn't believe how much fun it was. Uh, I was overjoyed, and I started to feel a bit different. Uh, it was a struggle as there was so much to learn and to do and to get right. Uh, but I found myself trying, just talking to people. Uh, I was outside in fresh air. I was thinking a little clearer. I was remembering a little bit more. My confidence was growing. My communication was getting better. My hand-eye coordination was on the up. And my overall well-being was increasing after each session to the point where it had become an addiction. It was the people at Manchester Baseball Club that made me want to do a podcast. It was the pandemic that made the content of the show change and grow to what you hear today. And it's the love and support of my family that's made me get to episode 100, especially Jocelyn. Um, or this would have just been a three-episode show and it probably would have been done. She's had my back every step of the way. So with that long-winded intro out of the way, why am I grateful to baseball and what does it mean to me? And since falling in love with the sport, you know, in the morning now, it's something I look forward to watching the, the MLB highlights with my little boy over breakfast. We, we play catch. He uses my tea and we play what his version of a baseball game is where he pretends to be a baseball player and, and someone's needed to play in the game and he gets called in from the crowd. And it's a lot of fun for him. And I love it. It's one of my favorite games to play with him. My relationship with my better half feels like it's back on track. And even though I can be difficult, uh, we're getting there and it's it's getting better every day. I'm not saying that these improvements wouldn't have happened without baseball, but it's a happy coincidence that everything seemed to be getting better since I picked up a bat and a glove. My desire to learn more about the games fueled my passion for wanting to learn and grow again. It's made me start a podcast. It's given me a chance to interact and connect with all of you a massive and engaging community of passionate people from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life, with all one thing in common, a love for baseball. From the very top of the national teams, the clubs, the seasoned pros, the Hall of Famers and the rookies and all the other amazing people in between. I found that when I thought my social group was going to decline, it's just exploded and grown massively. My first visit to Farnham Park in 2020 for the BBF Open Tournament, people coming over to me and talking and sharing their stories and experiences, it was just incredible and totally unexpected. Um, I was very overwhelmed by it. Um, baseball has made me comfortable in being open and honest about life too. And not only am I able to pick up my phone and reach out and ask for baseball advice for issues, Um, But I've been able to ask live questions and parental advice and much more from people that I've met for a couple of hours, spoken to for a while on 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 an interview, and I feel really connected and, uh, again, another reason to be really, really grateful. Um, Baseball has helped me open up about my struggles, uh, letting guests know my limitations at the start, and having to write things down, like whenever I used to do an interview and a guest was on with me, I'd, I'd write every answer down so I could refer back to stuff later on. And that's getting better. Uh, being ashamed of it as well, it was really hard to sort of open up because I was worried that people would think I was really weird, but it was embraced. And if anything, it was a massive weight off my shoulders and something that you know people really opened to and gave me more confidence and advice. You know, um, I don't feel like I'm hide anything anymore anymore and I feel like I'm me uh, baseball is the friend at the house party that introduced me as a new person to the rest of the room baseball is memories it's what was it's what is now it's what I'm overcoming baseball is not winning a game all season I'm not caring as it's just part of being a great team it's good for the soul it's not quitting when you're 17 runs down and somehow you manage to tie the game in the penultimate inning Baseball is teaching me not to give up. It's there. There's always a chance. There's a runner on third just waiting to come home. Baseball's appreciating all the small victories. Baseball's just swing hard at everything. You know, everything. Same with life. You just got to take them chances. 
just in case something connects. It isn't over until it's over. And this is why I love baseball and why I keep doing what I do. Even when I think I'm failing and it's all going wrong, I get messages from you, you lot out there. You know, you spare me on, uh, you tell me that you really enjoyed an episode or so-and-so was a great guest. You, you, a lot of you out there regularly contribute to con- content to the show and, and listeners questions. And again, another reason to be very thankful because you lot are the best. Thank you. There we go, episode 100 in the books. We ain't stopping there. 101 is going to be a great one with Gary Beddingfield. Um, Again, thank you to everyone that that did send stuff in. To those that that were able to, it's okay. There's there's always plenty of other time. And, you know, it's it's been a really, really up and down roller coaster of a journey. But I couldn't do it all without, without you lot. A lot of you out there, so many people to thank that, I'd, I'd struggle to to say names because I know I'd forget somebody and it wouldn't be fair. But you know who you are and you know how much I appreciate what you do. So if, if you're sat there thinking, yeah, that's me, you're right. If you're thinking, maybe it's not me, you might be wrong. It could be you as well. Right, and that's it. Me, done. Right, next time. See you all later. Stay safe. See you soon. ta